idealistic Randy is one of the OG callers into Vikings Vent Line. And now, he's one of the biggest Vikings YouTube superstars on Earth. His Vikings pain is now your game. This is Realistic Randy Rants with Randy and Declan on Purple Daily and Score North. Realistic Randy every Monday right here on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. What's going on, everyone? Declan Goff here, Realistic Randy as well, where we uh, drop some Vikings takes and knowledge on you every Monday right here. Hit the subscribe button for daily Minnesota Vikings entertainment. You can also go to Realistic Randy's YouTube channel for some great Vikings entertainment as well. Uh, Randy, it's our off-season edition now, so we've kind of transitioned, obviously, out from the regular season. We've been doing this for about a month now because the Vikings season ended, obviously, in the wild card weekend. And because we're still two months out, and it is mock draft season, baby. Let's uh, let's start with a mock draft here. I don't know if that's game with you, but let's let's go down this route if you're ready for it. Let's do it. All right, man. So we obviously do a lot of mock drafts too on the full show, full show with Mackie and Judd and myself on Purple Daily. So we figured let's bring some of this over to realistic Randy as well and get his opinion. So Randy, I have a two round mock here from CBS Sports. I want to get proper credit. To the author Ryan Wilson from CBS okay. Sports, one of the numerous, I'm sure, draft draft experts. Side note, Randy, I think mock draft like community content is one of the most interesting things in like all of sports media content. Like everyone's obviously is some of their jobs are with with draft analysts and stuff, but like NFL mock draft people, it's incredible. And like oh, I'm not sliding yeah, yeah. it. It's not like I'm not being a sarcastic like backhanded compliment. I truly find like this industry super duper fascinating and the cool thing about it is we all give our takes e equals mc square we give <laughs> yeah. our analytical takes as far as why this team will take what and there's so many different picks that we all come up with but at the end of the day when it's time for the team to actually draft we're all wrong but it's still fun i love it totally dude all right so we'll start off this one i'll, I'll i won't go through every pick i'll give you some of the highlights though uh, before the vikings are on the clock at pick 23 uh, so first pick in this mock draft, Will Anderson, the edge rusher uh, from Bama. He goes to the Bears. The Bears do stay put at one. They take edge rusher Will Anderson. Uh, first quarterback off the board to the Texans at two. That's Bryce Young. So Bryce yeah. Young, uh, second overall to Houston. Skipping around a little bit here. Uh, the Colts take quarterback at pick four, CJ Stroud. So we have a couple quarterbacks now off the board. Uh, Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher, going to the Seattle Seahawks at pick five. Joey Porter Jr., a cornerback to the Detroit Lions, NFC North uh, foe there. Uh, pick seven, Will Levis, another quarterback, Kentucky quarterback. He goes to the Raiders. They find their next guy with Derek Carr now moving on. So another QB off the board. Anthony Richardson at pick nine to the Eagles. So plenty of quarterbacks now kind of flying off the board here. Richardson's interesting to me. I know we'll probably get into this a little bit uh, later in the episode, but I've seen him be as mocked as high as five, and I've seen him fall the way to like 25 in some of these mock drafts. I feel like his pro day and like combine are going to be probably probably pretty big for him. Sure. Um, let's continue down. Jordan Addison to the Texans, a wide receiver. I think Ooh. he's the first one off the board here at pick 12 to Houston. He goes to the Houston Texans. Uh, Quentin Johnston, uh, the wide receiver from TCU. He goes to the Patriots with uh, the next pick at 14. Green Bay Packers, another NFC North uh, team on the board. They actually a tight end, Michael Meyer, Michael Meyer, I believe it is, right? Mayor Meyer from Notre Dame. Uh, so a big tight end target for whether it's Jordan Love or Aaron Rodgers or, you know, option number three at this point. I have no idea what the hell Green Bay is going to do. Thankfully, we're not Packers daily and we are purple daily here. All right, I'm going to skip down, Randy. Let's go okay. to the Vikings. Let's go to the Vikings. Pick 23 here in this mock. The Minnesota Vikings select cornerback keely ringo out of georgia six foot two 210 pounds here's the write-up and i would love your take on this uh the write-up says the georgia to first round pipeline continues to minnesota as a, a year after the five bulldogs went in round one expect a handful this time around too ringo is a long physical corner who has matched up against some of the best players in the country so a cornerback to the minnesota vikings at pick 23 keely ringo Georgia was absolutely loaded this year. Ringo was definitely part of that. Here's why I'm not I'm not a fan of this. Not necessarily okay. because of Ringo, but because of the position. I understand that for the Vikings to mock them taking a cornerback, that's the popular thing to do. I've seen that many, many times. I just don't like the idea of punting on Andrew Booth Jr. and a Caleb Evans. You still have Cam Dantzler as well. You may re-sign Duke Shelley 
after one year, specifically with Booth and Evans, the idea of saying, well, we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead and draft Ringo. You can only have two outside cornerbacks. So what's going to happen? Are you just going to go ahead and that Booth was thought to be at the time? I know he struggled last year before he got hurt. But Booth, at the time when he got drafted, was thought of as a first round talent. You really want to give up on that? Why not go linebacker? Why not go edge rusher? You need to basically replace the whole defense. And I feel like loading up on cornerback, especially in the first round, I just don't like that right now for the Vikings. So it's weird. I don't think there's PTSD with Vikings fans and cornerbacks. I think it's just pent up frustration, right? Like they've they've had some cornerbacks and defensive backs to your point, even recently from Booth and Evans, who are probably still projects here a little bit. Uh, Cam Dantzler went on the field, has shown flashes of being great, but then flashes of also being completely inactive and just not a factor at all. And just with, you know, the list that goes on basically over the last 10 years from guys have taken from Xavier Rhodes, Trey Waynes, Mackenzie Alexander, right? Like there's plenty of options at first, second round that the bikes have taken on cornerbacks and outside of Xavier Rhodes and the first obviously contract tenure of Trey Waynes. I mean, they always are looking to draft a cornerback early all the damn time. So I think Vikings fans like it's super duper frustrated because it's the same position and it's the same problem they're always having. For sure, do they have to rebuild the defense? And it probably does start with your defensive backs. But I think probably going the free agency route and finding a cornerback there to me, I would prioritize that over taking one. So I'm I'm kind of with you as with you there. Um, but it is a position that is becoming harder and harder to play, right? Like, def- I mean, the game is gearing up to to allow wide receivers to basically do do their entire job, and defensive backs get flagged for the most ridiculous things. But I, I'm kind of with you that them taking a cornerback here, I would not be a huge fan because I would probably more lean edge wide receiver. I mean, I don't know if they'll take John Michael Schmitz um, in the first round, who's Ooh, a, the boy. Minnesota center, uh, who's looking That'd great. Be sexy. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, that's kind of where I'm at, too. I'm with you there. So what would you do if one of these quarterbacks fall? Like, let's say we were just talking about Anthony Richardson, the volatility of, of him and these mock drafts and stock and combines and whatnot. Let's say Anthony Richardson is there at pick 23. What would you do? I've seen Anthony Richardson's name come up so much. Here's what I will say about him. The man is a physical specimen. He looks like he's built like Cam Newton. (laughs) <laughs> He's a dual threat quarterback can take off with his legs, extend plays. He has a cannon of an arm. He has several wow factors to his game. There's just one problem, Declan Goff. Just one problem. <laughs> one thing that you want to see any college quarterback have baseline going to the next level, accuracy issues. He completed 54% of his passes. Finding a quarterback It's hard to do baseline. I think it's the toughest position to figure out in sports. And to do that with a guy who, and you know what, for SNGs, because I knew we would talk about this guy, I decided to look up every starting quarterback in the league right now. Okay. Of the 32 starting quarterbacks in the league right now, those that had a sub 60% completion rate their final year in college before going into the pros out of 32 quarterbacks, three wow. josh allen lamar jackson and matt ryan okay so it's hard to find the quarterback baseline but to then identify a quarterback who relative to the rest of the league has a nine percent chance of being successful you want to go after that guy the quarterback position nah fam i think it's a complete waste of time and i don't want to hear well well josh allen we can't do that that was a one-off We can't say, well, he had a sub 60% completion rate, but he has a cannon of of an arm. But, oh, my God, he's Josh Allen. We can't do that. For every Josh Allen, we can find a 1,000 other quarterbacks that didn't make it. It's too much of a risk to say, okay, let's go after Anthony Richardson. You have so many other holes to fill. Mind you, you also have just four draft picks before you're awarded any compensatory picks. Mm -hmm. Address the other needs on this team. And quite honestly... If you want to go after a quarterback, which I think they should in this draft, I would play it safe. You need to trade down from 23 and gather up more draft picks. I would go after a guy like Hendon Hooker in the Mm -hmm. third round. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work out. But if you are, one last point, if you are going to shoot for the moon, okay, for the quarterback position, I would rather wait until next year and go for Caleb Williams. 
Okay, I like that. I'm about to say Hendon Hooker. That was the first name that popped into my mind before you said it as, as a possible project guy because he tore the ACL. You know, he's rehabbing. I would sure. assume, you know, he's probably closest to being ready by training camp opening. Maybe he's still a little limited by then. Uh, but his his stock has fallen. I think the other knock on him, too, is he's an older quarterback, too, right? He's already 25 Man. years old. Does that do anything? That doesn't no, do anything it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. My God, we look for everything to pick <laughs> these players apart. If Look at the tape, bro. Yes, he's older, but I look at it as he's seasoned. Yeah. And you look cool. at what he did in the SEC. He should have been a Heisman finalist. Are you kidding me? This dude was a beast. But yet we're going to sit here and prop up Anthony Richardson. <laughs> nah, man. No. It does nothing for me. Hendon Hooker is safe. I think his floor is high as hell. I would. I like Hendon Hooker way more than Anthony Richardson. Oh, he just has to work on his accuracy, accuracy issues. Okay, yeah, that's all he has to work on, and everything's going to be fine. Give me a break. Yeah, I, I'd be really interested in him. And, yeah, he was a baller at Tennessee this year. The Vols had a really good season for the first time in a long time. Um, I'd probably be more interested in that. So with the other quarterbacks that are going off the board here in those first nine picks I had, I said, you know, Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, et cetera, Bryce Young. And I know they have limited capital, but would it surprise you or should they pull a Kansas City Chiefs, move up the draft board unexpectedly, even though they mm. still have a safe quarterback and Kirk Cousins? Mm. Is there any route you see the Vikings doing that where they shock everyone, right? And they take a quarterback and they trade up into the first round. I can see the Vikings doing it. Yes. Now, again, I think the Vikings should play it safe. And if you are going to go and trade up for a quarterback, do it next year with Caleb Williams. But if they are going to do it, I don't think they should. But if they were to do it, only Bryce Young, which means you have to go for the number one pick, which means why would the Chicago Bears help out the Minnesota Vikings right. in the division? I don't see them doing that. Yeah. Any I, of the other quarterbacks, Stroud or Levis, absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. So I think the only way to that happens, right, If is if one of these quarterbacks maybe is there like at 12 or 13. I don't see any route them going into the top 10. Like zero, zero need, zero route for them. If they want to go from, you know, 23 to 15, 14, like somewhere in the, in the mid teen range. Okay. It's not, it's still going to cost a lot, but it's certainly not going to cost as much to get up to the top 10. And especially when you don't have the second round pick, you've lost some of your draft picks as well. So I could see them moving up, you know, five to seven spots, maybe, but moving up 10 spots or more to get in the top 10 to get one of those guys. I think it's pretty unlikely. I just, I, I I can see them trading up because the second year of this new regime, they want their own guy. Yeah. I don't think they, who knows? And they may extend Kirk Cousins into the moon forever. He'll be here until he's 77 years old, still throwing screen passes to whoever the hell receiver he has at that time. But also they may want their own quarterback. How desperate they may be, they may be to do that right now, this off season, this draft, I don't know. Hopefully they wait till next year, but I can see a situation to where they say, okay, screw it. We see CJ Stroud available. If he were to fall or well, will Levis. Okay. Let's go ahead and take that chance. I just don't think that's the right move to do right now. Interesting. So kind of recap some of this draft stuff. So don't prioritize a corner cornerback. Uh, don't mm -hmm. necessarily move up to draft one of these QBs. Cause you, cause you if you're going to do it, wait for next year's crop. Uh, so that kind of leaves you with back from our initial conversation of what you were saying at pick 23, you would clearly rather see them go edge rusher wide receiver. Is that kind of what you'd like to see them do? Isaiah Fowski out of Notre Dame or build up the defensive line, get it, get a pass rush. If you can put a pass rush together, a consistent pass rush, then my goodness, that's going to help your cornerbacks out a lot more, even with Booth and Evans. Let's say you were to draft Ringo at 23, but you still don't have a pass rush. Well, if your cornerbacks are sitting there chasing receivers around forever, it doesn't matter. And then the following year in 2024, guess who the Vikings were going to mock for them? Another cornerback. And around and around we go. You have so many holes to fill on this defense. Look outside of corner, defensive line, edge rusher, linebacker. You need a starting middle linebacker, assuming that both Hicks and Kendricks are gone. You need a second inside linebacker along with Brian Asamoah. There are so many holes to fill. I just think using it on a cornerback is a waste of time. I hear you. Um, taking a look here at what these other NFC North teams are also doing in this draft in front of the Vikings. So obviously the Bears uh, had the first overall pick. 
uh, before I ask you, you know, about these players that these NFC North teams are mocked to take, do you think the Bears stick at one? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't know I, I honestly I don't, don't know, know either. It, 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 you know, it's it actually goes into my evaluation of the Bears. If I can start that right now, go for it. Yeah. How the Bears go about the number one pick will determine how I feel about them going into next season. They have the number one pick in the draft. According to OverTheCap.com, they have $94.5 million in cap space. Here's what I'm thinking. If they select Bryce Young with the number one overall pick, and then, goodness, if you look at their draft picks, they've got after the first pick overall, their next pick isn't until until 53 they've got a third two fourths and two fifth round picks so it's not bad if they select bryce young with the number one overall pick and let's say they address whatever other holes in the draft with the rest of their picks and they have 94 and a half million dollars in cap space put together an offensive line get a receiver or two along with darnell mooney then okay they could be they could have potentially a special season in 2023 if they decide to trade down or not to not select a quarterback, I think they should take Bryce Young. I think he's the best quarterback in this draft class. But if they su- decide not to take a quarterback with the number one overall pick, they go edge rusher and they keep Justin Fields because the problem with Justin Fields, yes, he had a strong finish to the rest of the season. But now we're saying, OK, he just needs to be a better thrower in right. the pocket. Well, Bryce Young <laughs> is better than him right now. Yeah. And we're talking about Justin Fields going into year three. I I just think I don't see this man improving at all. You can start fresh, have a full slate with a full rookie contract, four or five years. My goodness. Whereas Justin Fields, you're going to have to make a decision soon. Do you really think he's going to take a giant leap going into year three? I just don't see it happening. If they select a quarterback and then address all the other needs, go ahead. But if they keep Justin Fields, it's the same old song and dance for me. Yeah, this is such an interesting situation for them because to your point of the cap space they have, Ryan Poles clearly executed a plan here of we are going to be bad. We're going to trade away all the veterans. We're going to accumulate as much picks as possible and give us the most cap space where, I mean, keep in mind on their cap space thought that they could be huge spenders, right? I mean, they're going to have some of the most money to play with at free agency and throw oogles of money at NFL free agents. And if they hit and if their draft picks hit and Fields does indeed take year uh, a step in year three, Well, the Bears go from the worst team in the NFL to probably flirting with the playoff spot, right? Like if all those things happen, that's kind of their plan here of it's a it's a it's a plan of them trying to get relevant again. And they went through these dark years the last two seasons. And if everything hits and pops, everything's going to be great for them. I personally think they're probably going to stay. I'd be man, I'd be pretty surprised if they took a quarterback. I I think I think they are hitching their wagon for right or wrong reasons uh, to Justin Fields. And to be honest, I just from watching from afar. I don't think Fields is necessarily it, but I understand them wanting to stick this out, play with the cap space, play with the draft, even if they want to move down and accumulate more picks. And if they want to move on from Justin Fields next year, they could still do that. I personally think they're probably going to stick with them, though. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Barely a 60% completion rate, over 2,200 yards passing, 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. But he can take off with his legs. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's... If you keep Justin Fields, I'm not worried about the Chicago Bears at all. Uh, the Lions here, Randy, on the clock at pick six. They take Joey Porter Jr. Uh, they get the cornerback there that they want, 6'2", 194 pounds. He's the fourth-ranked cornerback, according to CBS Sports, and the 20th best prospect in this draft. So according to this mock, a little bit of a reach, I guess. Uh, but if the Lions, so who were really pesky last year, uh, they beat even beat the Vikings pretty handily. Hell, they could have beaten them twice uh, when, when they first played here in Minneapolis. Uh, but if the Lions take a cornerback and just in general, your state of the Lions too, are they kind of trending, you think, in the right direction? Was last year Mirage or was last year kind of the first step into them becoming relevant for the first time in basically my entire life? They've got a great situation. In the draft, they've got two first-round picks, two second-round picks. In the first round, pick six and 18 overall. My goodness, pick 55 from Minnesota in that TJ Hawkinson trade. The Lions, they've got a bit of a head start, $13 million in cap space, according to overthecap.com, and that's before they make any moves to the roster. Kind of similar to the Vikings, but a little bit better explosive offense. They were a top five offense in the league last year. The Detroit Lions, they have a much better offensive line than the Vikings do right now. 
but they're similar in the sense that they need a defense. They just have to put together a competent defense and all hell will break loose for them. Maybe they'll finally get through to the other side as far as getting to the playoffs and maybe making a run or two. They certainly finished the season strong last year. I think they're just they're just in a much better situation, I think, off season wise than the Vikings are right now. Draft picks, cap space to where, man, you know what? If they put it all together, they could do something serious in 2023. And to your point of building up that defense, making it better again, because uh, obviously they'd be on the board again at pick 18 in this draft, and they would take edge rusher Lucas Van Ness out of, of Iowa. Course. So, so they, yeah, <laughs> of course yeah. they, yeah, I know. Uh, so they would go cornerback, they'd go defensive end, rightfully so. Jared Goff, I don't love, but man, he also balled out the second half of the season yes, last did. year. He looked a lot more like the guy that took the Rams to the Super Bowl and was, I believe, an offensive player of the year candidate, uh, you know, five, six years ago too. So I think they're probably hitched to him for one more year. I don't think they would take one of these quarterback uh, quarterbacks. Excuse me. I, I think they're think probably so. also married to Jared Goff for at least one more season, if not maybe even extending him. They certainly could do that. Um, but that's what they would do. I they are so interesting because I don't really buy the whole. I think the Dan Campbell thing gets stale after a while. Like I I think he's entertaining as hell. I love watching it from afar. But I think that message to me gets a little stale after a bit. So I'm just curious how how sustainable what the Lions are doing really is because they haven't really ever shown that they can be sustainable either. I mean, the Detroit Lions, man, Dan Campbell, I was the same way, but man, they won. They won five out of the last six games to end the season, including beating Green Bay when they were already eliminated from getting to the playoffs. If they can ride that momentum going into next year, they could be something serious. At the same time, it's the Detroit Lions, so you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. But they were very impressive, I thought, last year. And if they can just build up that defense, Jared Goff, I was done with him. But I think you're right. I think they stick with him for at least another season before they decide to make a decision on the quarterback position, whether they keep him or not beyond that. If they put a defense together, man, and they ride that momentum from last year going into next year, they could be a good team legit all right the green bay packers randy i love the no, we always no, love no. talking about these guys so uh michael mm -hmm. mayer it is mayer uh the tight end out of notre dame 6'4 265 oh. he's the number one rated tight end uh in this draft he's the 10th best prospect per cbs sports in this draft the packers haven't drafted a wide receiver in 21 years mm -hmm. and also in the write-up it says whether it's aaron Rodgers, jordan love or the qb behind door number three it makes a ton of sense here what if the packers draft a tight end with the uh 15th overall pick in the draft dex none of this matters you know why <laughs> do you know why because of one man holding this franchise hostage yeah, he's in the, you remember he's you in remember the, he's in the darkness i'm in the darkness he's oh like yeah right there right oh my goodness you remember <laughs> when we were much younger and witnessing the brett Favre days what seemed like the last four years of his career in green bay Every offseason, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm coming back or not. Let me yeah. go ahead and think things over. Maybe, I, And then right leading up to training camp, I think I'm going to play. And then he comes back and all is well in the universe. And it was so annoying. Every year we're going to do this. And now I don't even get annoyed with Aaron Rodgers. I think it's entertaining as hell. I see these reports that the Packers, they are disgusted with Aaron Rodgers. They're ready to move on. Well, my God, do something then. It's not like he has a no trade clause in his contract. You can move him whenever it is that you want to. Every offseason, you remember last year, not 2022, 2021, okay? The offseason leading up to that year, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, they got together <laughs> the and made dance. a last dance post on Instagram, meaning with Jordan and Pippen, meaning this is that we are here. This is the last year and we are going to move on because we're that damn good. And what happened? They got their asses kicked in the playoffs at home by the San Francisco 49ers. And what did he do, Aaron Rodgers? He came right back. Oh, it's the last dance. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and come right back. And now I'm going to go into this retreat and sit in a box for 72 hours. And all he, he does this every year. The only thing he's going to do is come out the other side and say, I'm going to come back. That's what's going to happen. I think they should move on. Jordan Love, I don't think he's necessarily it, but they feel really good about him. Aaron Rodgers doesn't look like he wants to play football. Half the time he's out there on the field, he's just just not even deer in the headlights. He, he just looks 
like he's bored. He looks like he doesn't give a damn anymore. I've never seen a drop off. And I'm saying this not as a Vikings fan. I'm saying this as a general football fan. I've never seen a drop off like what we saw with Aaron Rodgers, back to back MVP to what we saw last year. Nah, fam. But if the Packers, if if you're too soft and you don't, if you're disgusted with him, then go ahead and trade him. But if you're too soft to do anything, we'll let him decide what he wants to do, then so be it. So go ahead and draft a tight end. Draft whoever the hell you want. If he's the quarterback, again, it doesn't matter. It's kind of weird that we just basically had like a 15-minute conversation of like, man, if the Bears, if they do this right, or if the Lions, if they do this right, like the Vikings could be in serious trouble here. And then we're talking about the Packers, them drafting a tight end. And it's like, yeah, that's an afterthought. Okay. We're like, for, for the last, you know, they've been run, running this division and, and have had Hall of Fame quarterback play for our entire livelihoods. And now they're entering a very dark spot. And you know what? I'm happy to see this completely go down the drain. I, I, ho I hope you suffer. I honestly hope you suffer and get to feel like what this is supposed to be like for you. I hope it happens. Um, Randy, I, I do want your uh, opinion on this or, uh, or comments on this. I saw, obviously... Brian Flores was introduced formally to the Vikings uh, last Wednesday, I believe. I don't know if you caught any of that press conference, uh, but if you did, uh, what were your main takeaways from that as well? Is that I love the question that was asked to him as far as what are you going to do next year? Are you going to look at a head coaching position? And he gave a vague answer saying, we'll see what happens. We'll cross that road when we get there. He's only going to be here for one year. Yeah. But besides that, I love the fact that he says he's aggressive. He wants guys to have fun out there. I think he he comes off to me as a player's coach, mm -hmm. someone who gets it, someone that's going to make adjustments when his foundational blueprint doesn't work. He seems to be a guy, and especially when you basically have two head coaches that are calling plays on offense and defense, I think it's one of those things that we just need to take advantage of this elite mind while he's here, however long he's going to be here, which is – why I feel like these aging veterans on defense, let Brian Flores do all the heavy lifting. Let him instill this new defense with new young players. And so that way, if he does decide to move on, the next defensive coordinator doesn't have to figure that out after. As far as, oh my God, well, you know what? Now what do we do with Harrison Smith? Now what do we do with Eric Hendricks? I think you need to take advantage of this man being on this team right now. And that includes moving off from those aging veterans I think we're set up for a good year defensively, top 20 in the league. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's, that's the that's bar. That's what I'm setting. Yeah. My God. Yeah. No, I, I thought it was really impressive too. Um, you know, he's not like this super articulate and like bravado guy, but you can tell he means business when he talks and, you know, he turned around a dolphins defense that was pretty bad too. And just with, I know we might have some personnel issues here and, and building that defense up to our whole point of this episode um, is going to be tough to do a little bit because you have to hit on draft picks and hit on free agents. Uh, but I think it's going to be a breath of fresh air. And, and yes, the, the, the expectation and the only thing we really want is to have like the 18th best defense. That's kind of all we're asking here. I think this, the Vikings offense is obviously still in position to be one of the top 10 offenses in the NFL. And if Brian Flores can step in here and if it's one and done, by the way, that's, that's, that's all good. Like it's it, it probably, it probably is going to be one and done. Um, but if that's the case and he turns this Vikings defense around or puts it at least in a half step in the right direction, man, that's all, that's all gravy to me. I love that. Ed Donatello all season long. I was screaming at the TV. Let's do something, please. Yeah. God. But with Brian Flores, I feel like I could sit back and just say, Hey, hold up. Let him work. Let, Let him, him do his thing. Hold on. Yep. Let him cook. Let him um, cook. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to watch him uh, as well. Uh, Randy, any uh, final thoughts here before we uh, wrap up this episode? I love talking Vikings. Off-season, regular season, doesn't matter. We always got stuff to talk about. This was so much fun. Do not draft Anthony Richardson or Will <laughs> Levis. Go after Hendon Hooker in the third round. Address as many needs as you can this off-season and then go after the high-priced quarterback next year. Maybe I like it. Hit the subscribe button for Daily Minnesota Vikings Entertainment right here on Purple Daily. Go subscribe to Realistic Randy's YouTube channel as well for some awesome Vikings content. This is Realistic Randy Rants. We're live every Monday right here on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Of course, we're on Apple, Spotify, Score North app as well. Hit us with a five-star review. And, of course, we'll be back next Monday. Bye.